Greetings, time for a video log, and this is Paul Foote speaking, by the way. First thing was just something a bit interesting that I wanted to mention, which I've never really mentioned before publicly, and that is that I have a neurological thing, don't worry, don't panic, but it's like a neurological thing that means that I have difficulty recognising people's faces. It's called prosop agnosia. I'm not the worst uh, person with it but I have it to a considerable extent. So I might meet someone and then two minutes later have no recollection of seeing their face. Or I might have dinner with someone for several hours and then uh, an hour later I can't recognise their face. I'll remember the dinner, I'm not stupid, but I can't remember the face. It's like the recognition of the faces. Everyone has it to some extent. You know, you're in the supermarket and then you see someone out of context. But I have it to a much, much greater extent. And I wanted to mention it because it sometimes is a bit embarrassing and people think mm, what's wrong with Paul, he doesn't seem to remember me and they think maybe it's because I'm a bit arrogant and sort of in show business and I can't remember it's not, I just can't recognise faces so I uh, thought I'd mention that so everyone knows now the other thing I wanted to mention is intellectual rigour or the lack of now recently there was a thing, John McDonnell, the shadow um, chancellor, he said something about the speech of the Shadow Home Secretary, Hilary Benn, and, and in the debate about whether or not um, Britain should uh, bomb Syria with the ISIS business. Anyway, he said, oh yes, he didn't agree with the speech, and it reminded him of Tony Blair's speech when he wanted to invade uh, bomb places, and he said, sometimes it, the best oratory can lead to the worst mistakes. Now, I'm not getting involved in the ins and outs of whether or not we should invade, uh, not invade, but bomb Syria with the ISIS p p nonsense. But the point is that he's not making an intellectually robust argument, is it? I mean, you can't just say just because someone said it well that. It just, what does that mean? Just saying, oh, the best oratory can lead to the worst mistakes. Does that mean that anyone who puts something well they're gonna, is going to lead to a mistake? Uh, what, what, uh, what does that mean? Oh, and he says, oh, it reminds me of him of uh, Tony Blair's speech when arguably we made a mistake invading Iraq. But just because something reminds you of something doesn't mean it's going to be the same thing. It just reminds you of it. What he needs to do is just talk about what Hillary Benn actually said in the speech and then say what he disagrees with. Not, it's not into another subject. Other things that are not intellectually defensible I was thinking about supermarket, um, like their slogans, like every little helps. It doesn't really though, is it? That's not what helps. What helps is big things like having good quality produce, uh, smiling staff and not having to queue to pay for it. That's why I go to Waitrose. Oh, another, another supermarket calls itself, I don't know, I can't remember which one it is, uh, the fresh food people. But they're all the fresh food people. All supermarkets have fresh food. That's what they do. So what's the point of saying it? It's not intellectually anything, is it? Nonsense, nonsense. Now, on other things I wanted to say, uh, one um, was um, when I'm in a hotel, I always look under the bed uh, for um, see if anything's under the bed. And it's a useful tip this, because you look under the bed, and one time I found a Twix but like in a packet, all sealed and everything. Two Twixes, like in a double packet. I thought, oh, that's nice. So the point I wanted to make is, worth looking under the bed for a Twix, I suppose. But although you could argue that the time, I mean, I've been, that's about five years worth. That's the only thing I've ever found. So you could argue maybe in that time I've sp spent, what, in 500 hotels, a uh, third of a minute to look under the bed that's uh, 170 minutes. That's that, that's like that nearly three hours of my life just to find one Twix. So I suppose the point I'm saying is, don't bother looking under the bed for, because you're unlikely to find something, and the the, the amount of time is not worth it. Uh, and just leave, just leave the Twix. That's my advice because because I'll have it because I, I will still keep looking. And the other thing I want to say finally is that my 
uh, someone I know who's my father, he's always talking about people being kept alive, getting involved in this argument about the euthanasia. Again, I don't want to get involved in the ins and outs of whether euthanasia, but the point is, and he says, um, oh, like uh, my grandmother, who's 96, he, he says, she's being kept alive. Well, she's not been kept alive, though. She is alive. What's keeping her alive is her heart is continuing to beat, uh, having started like when she was born sort of thing. Oh, I don't know, maybe it starts before you're born. I don't know when the heart starts. I'm not an expert. It might be. I think, actually, thinking about it, I think the heart sort of starts up a couple of years into life. But anyway, the point is, she's not being kept alive. What's keeping her alive is no one's murdering her. I mean, I'm keeping her alive by, when I visit her every week, not putting a pillow over her face until she suffocates. She's not being kept alive. She is alive. Anyway, that is all I wanted to say in this video log. And uh, please watch the next video log. But also, please watch this video. Well, there's no point in saying please watch this video log because if, if you're watching this bit, you've almost certainly watched the earlier bit. So, I suppose the point I'm making is um, the video log's over. Bye!